Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, today what I wanted to show you is a little bit about sequence farming um, that we've sort of adopted from Peter Andrews. Now, as a lot of the regulars, you would know that as we've been cleaning up the back paddocks, we've been having a lot of rocks that we're taking out of the pasture. And so what we're doing or what I've been sort of mucking around with, because I wanted to see how this natural sequence farming worked. And so as what Peter was saying is that if you were to stagger a restriction, a water restriction in a creek, what would happen is that you would have debris and everything come into that restriction, i.e. let's say these rocks. All the debris will get caught into the rocks and slow that water down. And then slowing that water down it then has a chance to sort of hydrate out to the sides and especially on a floodplain. Now this is one of our front paddocks and um, I'm not well, I'm just trying to think now you know the, the cows haven't been in here for quite a while um, they're probably about another three or four weeks before coming coming back in but what I want to sort of talk about was when we first bought this property this creek here, or it wasn't even a creek, this was a dry causeway, so to speak. And what we thought we would do is, is adopt Peter's um, sort of methodology with the, geez, <laughs> with the, um, the, the natural sequence farming and put in restrictions. So as we're cleaning up the back paddocks, I'm coming down here and just dumping a heap of rock. Now, this was a lot higher, so this is all starting to settle. But what we need to achieve is from high bank to high bank, this is where the, the leaky weir needs to be. So this has just been settled really over the past, I don't know, how long has it been now? 18 months. Now, as I was saying, this was dry. And so what we, were, what we found is that the water levels were up like so and had time to hydrate back into the soils. Now, we're in the middle of summer. We haven't had rain now pretty much a good month. And I've still got flow coming down this creek. A little flow, but flow at that. And so what's happening is that as the water level is dropping and the hydrated soils, the water is dropping also within that soil period or that soil, soil column and coming back into the creek. Now, we don't use this creek for anything except for really just for us mucking around with the whole concept of, of trying to make a dry riverbed work again. And, you know, Peter says in all his books that, you know, he, he did that. And I think there was also a documentary TV series that um, he got a dry creek running again and I, I really just wanted to show you that you know as we as we come through here as you can see I've got another section again that's all settled and dropped but I've got flow coming all the way through and what we're finding is that you know like I was saying this is probably about 18 months worth of trial and error but the ecosystem is starting to evolve I've got, you know, water reeds, I've got duckweed in here. Um, you know, a lot of the, the natives are coming in. You know, like these little guys here. Now, we haven't seeded anything. This has all just been natural. And, you know, as we come up here, this section's actually quite deep. Um, and again, that water hydration has just gone sideways. So, I just thought if you, if anyone out there really has an old riverbed or creek or, or something of the sort, it's really worth it. And, and, and you know, this didn't happen overnight. Um, you know, this is, this is a, sort of been the 18 month sort of period. We had the, the winter rain that's come through and, and, and started to slow up that water for that soil hydration. And as you can see here, what we're finding, you know, this, 
we got silt and just leaves that are decompacting. You know, there's just, I mean, it's all just yuck, just all silt. But what we're finding is that they plug all the holes for your leaky weirs. And, you know, when we first put it in, yeah, it stopped, but geez, the water was flowing through it so fast. Well, oh, this is not gonna work. But then as time sort of progressed and that water stayed and we really slowed that water down, all this sort of vegetable matter, or not vegetable matter, but look, sort of leaves and sticks and stuff started breaking down in the system. Um, and then the bugs came and the ecosystem started to thrive. I mean, we come down here at dusk and you, can, you can't talk to each other. Like it is so loud with frogs and just the whole noise system coming through. And you can see, you know, what's actually happening here is that these guys, let me find one for you. Um, these here, they're the water reeds. So on the side of the bank, and they're a good indicator for um, where your hydration is. And if you can see here, look at it all through here. Water reeds, water reeds, water reeds. So that's telling me that there is a truckload of water off to the sides. And even on that side there, if we stand up and have a look, you know, you got more water reeds, water reeds, water reeds. And this was all barren, all barren. You know, so we thought, we, like I said, we thought we would give this a go. This was all just a nothing area, really just, it wasn't dust, but there was no life in it whatsoever. And the diversity of stuff that we, you know, I've even got clover still growing <laughs> in the middle of summer. So really at the end of the day, Leaky Weirs gets my vote. And if you have an old creek or something like that on your property, give it a crack. You know, like I was really doubtful, like, oh yeah, you know, but the proof is in the pudding. and. You know, and I'm sure that all of you could visualize this just being a red clay, just a dust bowl running through here, truckloads of erosion. And so like, you know, this um, summer, I'll be building these leaky weirs back up again. Um, and then getting back to the levels of the, of the high, coming back up to here, straight across, and really let this water soak in. Um, you can see I've got more rocks. As we come. But my next big sort of leaky weir system is just further up there. Um, and that's one that we drive over, over this creek. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we've got, you know, you can see flow here. I've got watercress in here as well. So the whole ecosystem is really kicking in. And um, so I thought, yeah, look, what an opportunity to sort of show you in the middle of summer. Now, I don't know, I would imagine that the cows drink from here. Um, but really at the end of the day, we've got stock troughs for them. But it's just more of a, more like a milk bar halfway stop. <laughs> just stop in for a quick little drink, meet their mates, you know. Give it a crack, give it a crack. So all about natural sequence farming and having a look at those periodic um, installations of leaky weirs. Like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.